Educating you on randomly selected medical topics until you become a doctor. Part 3. All right, what do you got, Phil bro? A patient with hand pain, probably a ganglion cyst. Oh, really? Oh, come on. I didn't say anything to summon you this time. You mentioned basal ganglia. Ganglion cyst? Oh. Well, I'm already here. Might as well ruin your morning. Oh, man. The basal ganglia are extremely complex, but we have a surgeon present, so I'll explain it as simply as possible. Thank you, brain bro. The basal ganglia represent a series of structures in the middle of the brain which act as a gatekeeper for initiating voluntary movement. Wait, I, I, I don't get it. Oh, that's right. I forgot how atrophic your gray matter is. Well, that's uncalled for. When you saw me suddenly appear in front of you, a signal was sent from your cerebral cortex to your basal ganglia telling you to run away. Your basal ganglia can either inhibit or amplify that signal. So it inhibited the signal telling me not to run away. Yes, it plays a role in most motor pathways, from your confused grimace to your slumped posture. The basal ganglia exerts an inhibitory influence on your motor systems. Release of this inhibition permits you to become active. Explain this in ortho terms, please, Brainbro. <sighs> if your brain was a party, the basal ganglia is the sober guy telling all the drunk people not to jump off the roof. Of course, because of the calcaneus fracture risk. If that helps you, yes. So what happens when the basal ganglia doesn't work? You get movement disorders like Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, and orthopedic surgeons constantly doing burpees. Whew. 